The Andrews government, as I said, could cop another grilling over its COVID response, with the opposition pushing for a parliamentary inquiry into the state's handling of the pandemic to be reopened. Liberals and Nationals are campaigning for the powerful Public Accounts and Estimates Committee to resume its investigation in light of 30 fundamental mistakes that have led to more border closures and lockdowns over the last six months. Liberal MP Richard Reardon is Deputy Chair of the Public Accounts and Estimates Committee. He joins me now from country Victoria, from the town of Colac. Richard, what are the failures you want this inquiry to look into? Well, uh, thank, thanks, Peter, and congratulations to you too. Another a great uh, Geelong-based person who's uh, uh, risen to the top this past 24 hours, so well done. But we, look, what we're chasing, Peter, is for this government to, to be accountable for this ongoing calamity that's here in Victoria. As everyone Australia-wide knows, it's only Victoria that just reverts back to lockdowns. And what is particularly um, aggrieving to, to our committee uh, to those others in Parliament fighting for everyone in Victoria, is that on the day this lockdown 4 was announced, the Acting Premier and the Treasurer gave numerous evidence to our committee that we were only going to have short, sharp and localised lockdowns. Well, here we are three weeks later. No one knows what's happening with school holidays. The football's up in the air. Small businesses are keeling over left, right and centre. And there's just no security. There's no... Um, there's no idea what's happening in the state of Victoria and there's no uh, ballpark that we're playing on. People just simply do, know, do not know what's going to happen tomorrow and it's a mm. terrible state of affairs. Yeah, the, uh, the uncertainty is very, very difficult to live with. It's, it's hard to run a business, it's hard to order in stock and all those other things. Have you got the numbers to get the committee up? Well, uh, the way our Pay Act Committee will work is I've, I've spoken to the crossbenchers. They're certainly keen to look at it. And what we're really keen to look at, uh, Peter, is that this government has had the coat inquiry, it's had the Ombudsman, it's had the Auditor General, it's had our parliamentary uh, inquiry, it's had upper house inquiries. Every element, every facet of government has looked at the way COVID has been handled in Victoria over the last 12 months. And it just appears that no one in government is taking any notice of any of the recommendations. I mean, to think we went to lockdown four with no preparation for how they're going to deal with small business, what they're going to do with the school kids, they just announced the lockdown and then sort of went away into hibernation for another week to figure out what to do. It's just simply not good enough. Um, and we certainly on our committee want to know what the hell have they been doing for the last 12 months? Uh, they've spent millions and millions on people looking at the way they handle it and they're just not listening. All right, tell me if this surprises you. A whistleblower has lifted the lid on the ongoing dysfunction at the heart of Victoria's troubled contact tracing system. According to the Herald Sun, a health department official says jammed phone lines at contact tracing HQ means quite a lot of Victorian residents returning calls from contact tracers just can't get through. Some are being forced to wait several hours, slowing down, obviously, the way in which they build these maps of, of who's had contact with whom. This is exactly what's also happening too, Richard, on the vaccination hotline. I mean, we've been in this now for 16-odd for months. I can't understand how this basic stuff, the fundamental stuff, isn't fixed. Yeah, absolutely. I can tell you on the vaccination booking, the software the state's using is so old-fashioned, Peter, that once uh, the bookings for that day or that next period that they're doing a book, it just goes nowhere. The phone line just drops out and people ring and ring and ring. I've had that many people contacting my office who've run 20, 30, 40, 50 times and just can't get through. And particularly once you leave metropolitan Melbourne and you're out in the regional Victoria, there's very few uh, um, vaccines being sent out. I mean, many communities are going days and weeks without any access to vaccine and they just can't book. It's mm. a hopeless system. It's miles behind what it should be. And as for contact tracing, um, the fiasco in Anglesey in my own electorate uh, in, in recent weeks, where they sent the army for three days after they recognised that it wasn't a, a positive case in Anglesey, they sent the army for three days later uh, making sure people were still quarantining in their homes and they didn't have to. Now, just think of the resources being wasted at contact tracing when that sort of bungle is happening on, on what seems a regular daily basis.
All right, what about this one? Statistics out today. If you, if you listen to the Victorian government that fronts its press conference every day, any delay to do with vaccinations is all Scott Morrison's fault. Uh, we're told don't look at other states. Victoria's doing the best we can. But not if you look at the statistics. Only 2.5% of Victorians aged 16 and over have been fully vaccinated. That is the lowest set of numbers of any state in the country. Tasmania have vaccinated almost 6% of their population. South Australia, 3.7. WA, 3.4. New South Wales, 3.1. Queensland, even, 2.6. Victoria's stone motherless last. Now, this is their responsibility. Scott Morrison does supply. They do delivery implementation. When Andrews comes back, when the Premier's back on deck in, what, two weeks' time, is he going to be able to fix this, do you think? Well, the funny thing about the Premier coming back is they can't tell you when you can go and visit your mother, but for some reason we're supposed to celebrate the Premier's coming back in two weeks' time. Now, go figure that one out. I wish they'd just get the accuracy on his, on his health as accurate for the rest of us poor Victorians who are locked up and, and can't do anything and can't go to work and can't visit our family. But moving on to, to where the vaccine, the vaccine rollout is, this is a monumental muck-up. Uh, you know, bizarrely, they know exactly how many people live in Victoria. They know exactly the demographics of everyone. And yet this rollout is sort of something akin to a dad's army effort. They don't know from one day to the next what communities are getting it, where they're getting it. They absolutely know how many people are on the second go around. These things need to be handled in a much more professional way. And quite frankly, Peter, all through this pandemic, we have seen the Department of Health here in Victoria using almost an abacus. I think. I mean, they just have hopeless software, hopeless um, data-driven stuff. And to see Gladys Berejiklian in the other day uh, show New South Welshmen how they get to book a vaccine, which is basically log on to your phone, press two buttons, and you're booked in. I mean, we're light years from that here in Victoria. Yeah, we're back sort of uh, cart and horse sort of stuff. I want to go to this last issue, if I can. All of these reports in the media that there's going to be a deal done between the government and, and crossbenchers are certainly in negotiations uh, to get rid of the rolling state of emergency legislation, as you know, that goes for a period of time, that it has to be renewed. So there's the check of the parliament against the power of the executive. Daniel Andrews wants those pandemic laws to be permanent so that he doesn't have to go back to see the parliament and get permission uh, to extend them, should we be back in uh, this sort of territory in the future. That's an extraordinary concern to me, Richard. I think most Victorians would be similarly concerned. Uh, what, what can you tell us? Well, what, well, we can't tell you very much, Peter, because the one thing this government's good at is secrecy. And, and half the time you don't know whether it's them keeping a secret or they just don't know the answer. But what we do know is when it comes to something sneaky, they will be dealing with the cross benches because they only have to deal with three of them in the upper house to get it through. But we, what we also know, and particularly on the, on the Public Accounts and Estimates Committee, one of the reasons we want to dive back into what this government's been up to is that they have refused from day one to stick to the rules of proportional response to this pandemic. And you cannot argue under any uh, strength of the imagination that everything that they're doing is proportional. To think that regional Victoria has been locked down endlessly, businesses are suffering endlessly because of uh, outbreaks in the city. The proportionality and the health mm -hmm. advice are two things that are absolutely crucial. And certainly the Liberal Party, Liberal Nationals will not be supporting anything that sees this government having carte blanche on locking people up in their homes without providing proper evidence and demonstrate the proportional response that's required. Well, keep up with the fight, Richard Redden. We need more sunlight, not less, uh, particularly Absolutely. on all of these issues as we head into, you know, as we head into, I think, a grave, wet winter period in Melbourne when people are concerned that lockdown four will become five, perhaps even six. Thank you for your time. Good, Peter. Thank you very much.